So I need to say that I'm sorry. Now, making an apology is never an easy thing, but when you're wrong, you should say you're sorry. So about, oh, I don't know, three months ago, I guess it feels longer than that, but about three months ago, I made this video here. And yeah, that's a cool animation and it takes a long time. I need to fasten that up. But anyways, I made this video here and in that video, I talked about my first impressions of the Pine Phone Pro. And overall, it was a interesting experience. And in that video, I very much lambasted KD Plasma Mobile. I talked about how slow it was and I showed how slow it was and all this stuff and how crashy it was and how horrible the battery life was and I blamed it all on Plasma Mobile. Like all of it. I was like, well, I, I'm the first chance I get, I'm going to put something else on this and I almost guarantee it's going to be better. I was wrong and I should definitely apologize to Plasma Mobile. Now, you guys know me, I have problems with KD Plasma. I always have in a while. So I'm not going to go far, so far as to say that none of the problems that I experienced in that video were because of Plasma Mobile. I guarantee that some of them were, but I don't think, in fact, I know I didn't take into account just how bad this device actually is. This is the PinePhone Pro, the same one that I talked about in that video. And in the three months since I made that video, I've attempted to put Mobian on it several times. I finally did get it on there. Now, I was thinking that maybe, you know, maybe it's just a Mobian problem. Maybe I'm, a, I'm an idiot and I just don't know how to do it. I was following the directions and I kept experiencing boot loops. And there was one time I experienced a kernel panic, which is something that I haven't experienced on Linux in probably five years. And I kept having to recharge the battery over and over and over again, despite not having a, an operating system even on it at that point, because it had already been flashed. I'm convinced at this point though, that the problems with Linux mobile, at least on this device, aren't because Linux Mobile is necessarily bad. It's because this device here is not good. I did, like I said, I did finally get Mobian on this. I'm not going to show it on camera because it is a frightful experience. You guys thought that the KD Plasma on this was bad. Mobian may be worse. It's not usable is what I'm saying. And I, I probably should record that and put that in here and maybe I will. Uh, I'll have to get their equipment out to do it. So if I if you don't see that, you just know that I didn't do it. But just take my word for it. For whatever reason, on my PinePhone Pro, Mobian does not work very well. And it took ages to get actually get installed and installed properly, or at least what I think is properly. Maybe the reason why it doesn't work very well is because it's not installed properly. I don't even know. All I know is that you go to unlock it and it just slugs right down. You can't get to anything. So... I did some research and I've t I've talked to some people who also have the PinePhone Pro and have used both the, of the operating systems that I've used on it and the result is a mixed bag. Some people have Mobian on this thing and it works nice. Not great, but it's functional, right? Other people are more like me. They can't get it to work either. Some people had much better luck with Manjaro Arm, which is what comes with this out of the box than I did and other people had the exact same experience that I did is that it you know was very very slow and not very good experience right it was for me it's more usable than Mobian is but that's you know whatever so I want to say I'm first I'm sorry to Plasma Mobile because it wasn't all Plasma Mobile's fault and second of all in the video that I made about this I talked about how this was a development device and I firmly stand by that this is a development device, and in fact, they say that it's a development device. But I don't know how anyone actually does development on this work. Now, I'm not a developer. Uh, I've never claimed to be a developer. I never will claim to be a developer. But I would assume you need some level of actual performance to get, you know, developing before you can do some development, right? And from my experiences on this device here that I have, I would say that it's almost impossible to do. Now, it's possible that I have a faulty device. It's very possible. It seemed to work, f you know, fine-ish with Plasma Mobile on it, but once I put Mo Mobian on it, or tried to put Mobian on it for those times where I, fit, you know, failed, I had so many problems with it, like the boot loops and the kernel panic, and it just was not a good th experience. And like I said, it will not hold the charge very long at all. Like, 
just a couple hours at this point. So it's entirely possible that I have a faulty device, but I've talked to people who have the exact same experience. Now, there's not anything wrong with a very small company releasing a device like this, especially when they're very honest with the fact that this is not supposed to be a mainstream device. My issue with the, this is that this is the most expensive device you can buy from Pine from the Pine people, Pine 64 or whatever they're called, right? This is the most expensive device I believe that you can buy. Uh, it's, it's like 350 almost $400 or something like that. And while I think that the maybe they have Pine books that are more expensive than, than that, they also have ones that are cheaper. Anyways, it's right around there. It's, it's one of the most expensive that you can buy. And my problem with all of this experience that I've had is that... At that price point, there are Android devices out there that are more powerful and don't have the quality control issues that this does. Now, obviously, Pine has tried to make this their own device, and they've done a fairly good job, but they've done that at the expense of quality control. This is, this. well, if I was fairly impressed when I first got it. Like, you know, this is a fairly solid device. The longer that I've had it, the more it has worn, right? It's only been a couple months. The buttons aren't as clicky as they were. Some of the hooks or whatever that hook the back to the front are not as grabby as they once were because I've had to pull it off several times in order to pull the battery out to do a hard reset because of the stupid boot loops and shit that I've been having to go through. So maybe that's just because of, you know, that experience and you're not just supposed to, you're not supposed to pull it apart as often as I have. Maybe that's the reason why, but the quality control issue quality control stuff is just not there. Now, again, not that big of a deal when you know going in that it's not meant for mainstream, they're still developing it and whatever, but it's an expensive, a fairly expensive device considering that there are Android op alternatives on the market around this same price that can also run Linux mobile. <laughs> you know, a lot of the Budget devices around the, no, not a lot, but a few of the budget devices around this price point can, in fact, run several of the mobile operating systems that we consider Linux mobile. And the fact that that's true makes this device look bad, like not a good idea. And that has been my overall experience with this for the whole three or four months that I've owned it, is that from one experience to the next, it's disappointed me. I blamed Plasma Mobile at first. I did that in that video. It's not Plasma Mobile's fault. This is just a bad device. And again, I didn't want to say that because I want to support smaller companies. I don't want to have to go buy something from Samsung or you know whatever to be able to use Linux Mobile. But I almost certainly, if I'm going to do some Linux Mobile content, I'm going to have to find a different device because this one here, I can't get to work with either of the two operating systems that I've tried. Now, maybe I'll go try one of the other ones because there are several different versions of Linux Mobile that I can try. Maybe I'll have a better luck with one of those. I don't know. Maybe I'll try Mobian again. I'm, I'm very frustrated with it right now, so maybe I'll put it in the box for a couple weeks or whatever and try again. Right now, I'm done with it. And, you know, that's upsetting to to me and I hopefully to you guys too because I had plans to make a lot of videos. Uh, Sid, my patron who sent this to me, asked me to do a whole video on, com you know, convergence or whatever, being able to use this as a desktop uh, replacement or at least a desktop type thing. It's impossible for me. I can't do it. it. This device just doesn't have that type of horsepower even to run itself, let alone actually running desktop Linux. It just can't do it, at least so far. I haven't figured out how to do it. So... I wanted to say I'm sorry to Plasma Mobile, but I also wanted to just talk about it because I talked, I asked in that video, is Linux Mobile ready? And I was very much like, yeah, it's better than I thought it was. And at that point, I was like, you know, what? I was really expecting to not have a good experience at all. And I had an OK experience. Well, I've changed my mind just a little bit, but I'm still almost convinced that it's this thing here, that it's just not OK for this device, which given the fact that that's all that can run on this is Linux Mobile is a little, you know, weird that they don't have a good option. Now, I hear that UB ports or Ubuntu Mobile or whatever they want to call it is also a good option. So maybe I'll try that. I know that that's an option for at least the regular Pine phone. I don't know if they have Pine phone Pro support or not. I'll have to look into it. So I'm not giving up on it, but right now I'm just a little frustrated. So those are my thoughts so far, again, on the Pine Phone and why you guys haven't seen another Pine Phone video, because I have been struggling in the background to actually do 
another uh, i wanted to do the mobian thing i i thought i had it canned last week and it just didn't work like i had i got to the last two sections of the install instructions and i went right into a boot loop again I, maybe i did something wrong i don't know and i had it on the schedule for last week to do the video and then it didn't work and then i tried again yesterday and again yesterday was the kernel panic thing and i was like <laughs> i'm just i'm done and I'm just going to sit here and rant about it for a little while. So those are my thoughts. If you have any experience with the PinePhone Pro, or if you have better experiences with the PinePhone Pro, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.linuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, all the sales for which goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much if you've done that already. If not, shop.linuxcast.org to get awesome merch. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now. And yes, I have fancy animations. I'm going to have to get used to that because it's going to scare me every time I press the button. Anyways, thanks for everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it again, as I said. So thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.